Good evening, and this is uh, number four in our broadcast on confession. And I want to take up uh, now a particular problem that sometimes arises in confession, and that is the priest's obsession with uh, certain sins. Uh, a priest can actually become obsessed with certain kinds of sin to the point that he brings it up every time someone comes to confession and it begins to dominate his confessions. This is uh, also an error which we have to avoid. Certain kinds of sex and sexuality are the most common obsessions that come to mind. And I want to tell you a very sad story, and unfortunately a true story. Uh, there was a, a young man in his 30s, wife and two children, who developed a terminal cancer and he was going to die before long. Well, he was as much in agony over what would happen to his family as he was about his own death. But of course, when a person dies, especially a young person, the loss is serious. Everybody in the family or acquainted with him is losing one person. He is losing everyone. He's losing the joy of his children and seeing them grow up and the joy of his wife and the love that they shared. So all these things weigh very heavily upon a person facing death, particularly a young man with a family like this. So he went to um, Gibbon Monastery to confess. And it, what he wanted to do was to find some help in facing death to find some comfort, some consolation, some hope for his family, and uh, to just come to some kind of peacefulness about the fact that he was going to die soon. When he went to confession, however, the priest who heard his confession interrupted him when he began to tell what his grief was and said, first of all, we have to clear up the matter of your sexual relations with your wife and wanted to discuss whether his sexual relations with his wife were what that priest thought was appropriate or if they were sinful, by which he meant, do you have sexual relations, do you enjoy the sexual relations, or do you try to make them as quick as possible only to bear a child and try as hard as possible not to enjoy them. This was what he got when he went there to try to find some comfort and consolation in the face of death and leaving his young family behind. Now, these kind of obsessions are really a sign of some kind of either a neurotic condition or an outright psychosis. There's something seriously psychiatrically wrong with a kind of obsession about sex and particularly an obsession about the sexual relations of a married couple because a married couple live in a sanctified union which is out of the bounds of anyone to interfere with. And uh, this is something that I want to emphasize a great deal, and I hope it irritates a few people, and I hope others will listen to it carefully. Moral outrage is a form of confession, because we hate most in others what we fear most in ourselves. Obsessions with certain issues that come over in confession sometimes are a reflection of the inner torment of the priest who's hearing the confession, of his uncertainty that he himself has chosen the right path. I want to remind people that when God said it is not good for man to be alone upon the earth, he created a wife for Adam. He did not create a monastic brotherhood. He gave him a wife and put them together to be the fullness of each other's life. And when they're united together in marriage as a type and likeness of Christ and the church, of course we teach people to have self-control and self-discipline and not go into exotic sexual practices that can destroy their lives. But to interfere in the normal heterosexual relations between husband and wife in a marriage 
In my view, it's simply evil to do that, to confuse and bring chaos into their marriage. I know a number of young couples who have gotten divorced because an obsessed clergyman heard their confessions and gave them some purely Gnostic advice about their relations in their marriage. The other thing is that when we talk about people living together in sin, that is, without a, 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 a justice of the peace or a judge or a, a, a clergyman giving them a piece of paper, uh, we have to remember that a couple who are married in the church and legally who hate one another or despise one another and still have sexual relations are living together in sin because to have sexual relations just to use one another and fulfill one's lust and fulfill one's uh, immediate emotional needs even though you don't love the person that is truly a sin even if a person is married sexual relations are not simply to fulfill one's lust and they're not simply to fulfill an emotional need that doesn't relate to the other person's emotional needs. Sexual relations are the privilege of a husband and wife who love one another. And outside of a relationship of love and caring, outside of uh, that kind of a bonded, committed relationship, sexual relations can be very destructive. So uh, that should also be taken into account. If a couple despise one another, are still married, but are still having sexual relations, the priest needs to discuss with them the fact that sexual relations among people who despise one another but are simply using one another for the needs of their lust is something that is a sin and needs to be repented of. So uh, while we say that we do not intervene in the sexual relations of a married couple, there are problems and situations that we need to take into account. For example, if a couple starts experimenting with sadomasochistic practices or strange things like that, these are extremely destructive, spiritually and physically, emotionally, mentally. And we need to be alert to that sort of thing as well, not because we want to intervene in normal heterosexual relationships in a marriage, but because we see destructive practices destroying the marriage, destroying the souls of the couple, destroying their minds and their emotions. They're extremely destructive. A great deal of discretion, self-discipline, and self-control need to be exercised in marital sexual relations. But the priest who's obsessed with the sexual relations of a married couple probably need psychiatric help himself. And I just want to offer that and I would like for people to think about it and I would like for some people to become infuriated about it because like the Pharisees that Christ spoke to, they know that I'm addressing them.